It's not that. There is a more obscure lair that belongs to another cat. A more elusive character, but by no means less impressive than the lions. His name is Makajan, which means Batman, master of the night. So vast is his territory that he spends a large part of his day patrolling it, meticulously leaving his scent on every point that, to him, represents a crucial landmark. The lions disregard his carefully laid, scented footprint, but they're not the animals he worries about right now. He's on the trail of a young female, Ntombi. She's been in Estrus for several days, and he's no other Muslim anywhere. She's covered a little day than Kajan's already. She didn't need her protection, and the her alone, and of herself. But she does need his strong genes to father her cubs. She spots him first. He hasn't seen her yet, but he follows her trail. By instinct, she walks away. Leopard encounters are never easy. A hyena carefully follows their moves. Makajan is sure that Ntombi is an estress, but she's not sure she wants to accept his favors. He doesn't know that. He can still smell her inviting scent. Makajan realizes that he's not going to win her over and leaves. The two leopards go their separate ways, back to the solitary lifestyle typical of a leopard. They leave behind their unique cat smell, and the hyena rolls in it to mask her own. If she smells of leopard, she might be able to get close enough to one to steal his kill. Ntombi is gone, but her scent lingers. He calls her, hoping that she hasn't gone far. But his low rasping is drowned by some unruly sounds. Hyenas are ripping an impala kill apart. But this isn't their kill. They stole it from the old Shibeli lion. he takes it back. His roar is a powerful weapon. It scares off scavengers like these and wards off enemies. But how long before the three brothers realize that the old male's roar goes unanswered? How long before they understand that the neighboring land is owned by only one male? They are young and new to this game of territories, and for now, they are happy with their newfound kingdom. The complexity of the lion's territories is lost to the larger animals of Africa. To giraffes, it makes no difference whose turf they're on. Lions are dangerous anywhere. When they find them, they keep them in their sight. For the elephants, 
that's not good enough. Lions kill their newborns, so the further they make them run, the better. Elephants have seen generations of lions come and go. They've walked through the invisible boundaries that change with the strength of the reigning king. All this is unimportant to them. Their survival depends on the best food and water that they can find over an expanse of land that stretches far beyond these lions' territories. They're on the Three Brothers' land now, only because it has the best source of water around. And nearby, there is an enormous expanse of bushland to feed. The old Shibele male takes some time out with his pride. At his age, he tires quickly. His joints are stiff and riddled with arthritis. He doesn't hunt with the pride anymore. For the two young lionesses and the five cubs, this is a problem. They depended on the experience and strength of the old male and his three lionesses. Now, the females are gone and the old male is tired. The Shibeles are in trouble. The two remaining lionesses used to take the older one's lead. Now they find themselves alone, having to provide for a handful of almost fully grown cubs with matching adult appetites. At every opportunity, they try to go for buffaloes. Just two lionesses against a whole herd. The odds are against them. Inevitably, the lionesses lose. Despite being almost two years old, the cubs are of no use. They just don't know how to hunt because they missed out on some crucial guidance, usually given by the adults in the pride. It takes special skills to hunt buffaloes. Skills that the three brothers perfected during their nomadic years in Kruger. The sisters are desperate to be accepted by these males. They try all the tricks they know. Flirting seems to work. But the male is not sure what to make of this. Encouraged by her sister's progress, a second lioness moves closer. And her young son follows her. He shadows her in the hope of getting her protection while trying to get close to the carcass. The sister's arrival has unsettled the brothers. They are unsure of what to do, fight them or accept them. The female scent is distracting. Quietly, one of the lionesses starts to feed. Her sister tries to move in too, but she's too fast for the lion's liking. Meanwhile, 
The one feeding eats as quickly as she can. And the male makes sure that the lionesses see who owns this kill. Having learned from her mistakes, the mother moves closer, slowly. Her son follows. But he is getting too close. The brothers have had enough and take out their frustration on each other. Undeterred, the lioness carries on feeding. But soon her time is up. reclaim their meal.